Welcome to Upticks. I'm Jake Falcon, the founder of Falcon Wealth Advisors and your host of Upticks. Today's episode 172, year-end tax planning. Corey, thank you for joining me back on the show. Thanks for having me. Um, so you and I have recently been getting coached up on our podcasts. And I'm curious, before today's episode, did you sing Bob Dylan like our coach has recommended? I did not. I thought about it. I actually thought about it as I was walking in the building this morning, but I, I thought if I'm singing Bob Dylan out loud and there's people around, they might wonder what I'm doing. There's nobody around. It's 7 a.m., 7.20. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you I should, just shouldn't worry about it so much, but I could sing Bob Dylan right now if you'd like, but I don't think uh, anybody's going to want to hear it. We'll save that for another show. Now, are you drinking coffee, though? Is it, was it hot, though? It's hot. You got to be careful with that, right? Didn't he say warm, warm water? It's warm. Okay. It's warm. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Well, thank you for joining me back on the show. This is an interesting episode because we're airing it before our webinar that we're hosting. So we're hosting a live webinar, but this isn't going to go out until after the webinar has already been completed. So it's kind of like back to the future a little bit. We're, we're playing with time here. Um, but really, this episode is for everyone that missed the live webinar. So what you and I wanted to do is we wanted to cover some of the topics that we're going to be discussing during our webinar, which is next week, which will be last week when this goes out, if that makes any sense to you. Back to the future. Got it. <laughs> so, so what's important, though, and it's kind of a, a tough subject, but I think it's a very important subject because for many of our clients, they're not getting much forward, forward tax planning advice from their CPAs. And I, and, I, and I don't want to pick on the CPAs. I think by their nature, that profession is rear view uh, mirror looking. They're always going to look in the past what happened and how do we file that correctly with the IRS. And I think that bogs down a lot of their time. So for many CPAs, simply tax planning just isn't something that's in their repertoire. So it's fallen on many financial advisors and most financial advisors don't do it. So, but we do at Falcon Wealth Advisors, we do take tax planning very seriously. Now my compliance likes to have a disclosure here. We're not taking the place of your tax advisor, right? So we're not signing off on your returns here, but what we are doing is we're doing forward projections and we're looking to minimize that tax column so that ultimately your long-term retirement plan or your financial plan looks better because of our work. And that's really what we're trying to do for our clients. Big value add for what we do. So, so what I wanted to do for today's show, Corey, is I wanted to break it up into what people that are still working can do for year in tax planning, what everybody can do for year in tax planning, and then what some of our clients that are well into retirement, what they should be looking at is it regarding their tax planning. Okay. So, so we'll start okay. here. So with, with, with phase one here, so for our audience that's still working, right? So you're actively employed, whether that's self-employed or a W-2 employee, I think the, the captain obvious here is contributing to some sort of retirement plan, whether that be a 401k, a SEP IRA, a simple IRA, 403b, 457, IRA, Roth IRA, there's a ton of them out there, right? But the low hanging fruit here is uh, you've got options. So, so if you're actively employed and you want to lower your taxes the most for this year, what should people do, Corey? Make pre-tax contributions to their employer retirement account. Right. So for 2021, I believe the uh, max for 401k is 19500 mm -hmm. right? If you're under the age of 50. And then if you're over 50, isn't it, there's a catch up, right? Mm-hmm. Do you know it how much is, that is? Yeah, it's 6,500, bringing it, it is 20, $26,000 total if someone's over 50 that they can yeah. contribute. We're doing math early in the morning here. It is early, yeah. <laughs> Before the yeah admittedly, I have, a, I have a cheat sheet that I would normally look at to answer that question. Well, just we'll just double, sure we'll double check right your math here. You're right, 26,000. is the. So if you're over 50, you can put 26,000 in your 401k. Now, this doesn't include your company's match. This is your money that you can contribute. Right. So if you're under 15, 19, 5. now, but this is one big area of caution that I want to put out there on this episode is that by putting money in pre-tax, you are not permanently lowering your tax situation. You're only doing it this year. 
See, when you put money in a 401k or retirement plan and you deduct it from your taxes in that respective year, what happens is when you eventually go to spend that money or pull that money out, you are going to pay taxes at whatever tax bracket you fall in in that respective year. So typically people that want to put money in pre-tax are in high tax brackets today with the hope that they're going to be in a lower tax bracket in retirement. That's who the pre-tax strategy works best for. Correct. Now, this is the issue though, right? This is my big problem with planning um, is that you can't predict the future. And so tax brackets, we know what they are today, but we don't know what they're going to be next year, even believe it or not. And, and we don't know what they're going to be 10, 20, 30 years from now either. And so um, for most of our clients, we like utilizing also some sort of Roth feature as well. And Corey, why don't you explain what that looks like? Jake just explained the pre-tax <clears throat> employer retirement account where you're deferring it. You're ultimately deferring the taxes until you take distributions in retirement. The Roth, on the other hand, is funded with after-tax dollars or the money that you pay. You pay taxes on the money today. You put the money into a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k if you have that available through your employer, and that money grows tax-free. So while we're talking about year-end tax planning here, making contributions to a Roth won't lower your taxable income now, but the idea there is you're lowering your future taxable income because there's less dollars that you have to pay tax on if and when you take distributions in retirement. Right, so, so it's another juggling act though, because the idea is if you're in a high bracket now, and you put money in a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k, you're going to pay, and, and then ultimately you retire and you're in the lower bracket. Well, then you kind of just gypped yourself out of money. Actually, you ended up paying more in taxes than if you would have put it in pre-tax and pulled it out. So I guess my point is um, we want to run some projections for you. I think um, as a general statement, the younger you are or the further you are from retirement, probably the Roth makes more sense because it also allows it to grow longer and yep. compound and you have that much more money in a tax-free bucket. So a perfect client would have a third of their money in a traditional 401k, a third in a Roth and a third in a taxable brokerage account because they're all taxed differently. And, and so that's why it would be a perfect scenario because then you could pull and, and, and pick and choose from whatever account. So I guess my point here that, you know, to, to kind of wrap up phase one here is it's not a no brainer um, putting it in pre-tax or Roth. Um, but it is something that we can talk about at Falcon Wealth Advisors. And in fact, our financial planning software can show you the difference if you put money in pre-tax or Roth and what that 30 year plus projection will do to your projected taxes. Now, again, we're dealing with some unknowns and we don't know what Washington's going to do with the tax brackets, but at least you can get some sort of idea of where you're headed with that. So the, so you're dealing with these unknowns when a 30 year projection. And so that's what our financial planning software will allow for. But again, um, because there's so many variables, uh, we can at least see what that's going to look like forward looking Corey, and then make some decisions on that. Oh, this is where I was going to go with this is that even if you choose the Roth or the pre-tax now, or, or more of the pre-tax, that doesn't mean that it's too late, meaning eventually you could always convert that pre-tax to a Roth later in life. And that's what we're going to get to right now, actually. So um, don't feel like you, this decision has a ton of weight on it because you can always pivot later in life and adjust it accordingly then. So that's, that's some good news with that. And the quick piece that I just want to add to that is most importantly, though, is that the money's getting saved and invested. Right. right. That's point. the most important piece. Good point. Good point. Doesn't have much to do with taxes, but you're right. More importantly, it is. it is getting saved. So let's talk about phase two here, what everyone can do, Corey. So um, some, some of the items that I had on here is that uh, I heard this good trick from a CPA once is that you can prepay your January mortgage payment in December um, so that if you are itemizing your deductions, you could potentially write off more mortgage interest by literally just moving that mortgage payment from January 3rd to December 30th, right? So that's something that's pretty, so again, I'm not suggesting to make an extra mortgage payment. I'm suggesting you move up your January payment a week to deduct it. If your mortgage if rate's low, analyze. I don't like clients paying it off early necessarily. So um, that could help you a little bit on your taxes. I think that was a pretty cool trick that the CPA told me once. Yep. Uh, you got one that everyone can do? Yes, make contributions to an HSA. 
or a health yeah. savings account if somebody yeah. is eligible to do so. Yeah, and so the so if you're in a high deductible um, health insurance plan and it allows for a health savings account, an individual can put thirty six hundred dollars uh, in there pre tax, and a married couple can put seventy two hundred in there. What's cool about this is you get to deduct it, invest the money. If you use it for qualified health expenses, all of that growth is tax free when you pull it out. And if you don't use the money when you're 65, it basically turns into an IRA. So it's not like you lose, it's not a use it or lose it situation. So it's a really good, uh, really good tax savings vehicle that you get to lower your taxes today. The growth is tax free as long as you use it for qualified medical expenses. I have yeah, that one. has the features of the pre-tax and the Roth. Yeah, yeah it's kind of a little bit of, it's the best of both actually, which is really cool. So that's a big one in there. Uh, donor advised funds is something big that I talk about. So what this is, it's an account that you open with us at Falcon Wealth Advisors or your advisor uh, if they're uh, aware of them. And basically you can put 10, 20, 50, $100,000 in this charitable account and give the money out slowly. So it's called a bunching strategy. So you might put $100,000 in this account and only give $10,000 away. But the beauty is if you put 100,000 in there, you may be able to deduct all or some of that on your taxes. Now it all depends on what you donate. You do, do you donate stock or cash and what your adjusted gross income is. But my point is you can bunch together your charitable giving. And I have a lot of clients that do this uh, in very high income years. So if they made a lot of money um, that wasn't really expected, they might defer some of it this way by, by putting a bunch of it in a charitable account that we can establish for you at Falcon Health Advisors. Let me, let me ask you, Jake, what is your opinion on who a donor advised fund works best for? I think it works best for somebody that has appreciated stock in a taxable account, because not only do you get to potentially write off that donation, even though you're not giving it to a charity immediately, any capital gains that you have unrealized won't be realized because they're going to be realized in a charitable account and there are no taxes in this account. And so I think someone that's in a high tax bracket that has highly appreciated stock in a taxable account that most importantly, Corey is charitably inclined, right? Because if you're doing this just to get the tax rate, it's really not going to make you happy because it's an irrevocable gift. Meaning once you put it in this charitable account, you can't really pull the money back out or you can, but you're going to be taxed out the wazoo. How about yep. that? That's a good word for you, for you, uh, Midwestern and you, Corey, that wazoo. The wazoo tax. You don't want to pay <laughs> you're that. Gonna, you're going to be taxed out the wazoo. So don't, don't use it just for tax reasons. Yeah. If you're charitably inclined and, and you don't have to have big, I mean, if you give, you know, I don't know, 500 bucks a month to your church, you know, you're still giving away $6,000 a year. So that, and if, so if you put 50,000 in here, you know, that's almost 10 years worth of charitable giving to your church that you can write off in that year. Cause the problem is because the standard deduction has gone up so much, a lot of people aren't writing off their charitable donations anymore. And so this is a way to be able to do that uh, and get you above that standard deduction. So you can write it off. So I've done full episodes of upticks just on donor advice funds. So I encourage you, if you are interested, go on over to falconwealthadvisors.com under our content section. You can just search donor advice funds. And I'm sure one of my episodes of upticks will pop up. Excellent. Without going too, too much in a rabbit hole in there. Do you have yeah. another one, Corey, that again, this is for everyone? Yes. Tax loss harvesting. What tax loss harvesting is, if you have realized gains, so if you bought and sold the stock and you made money and realized a gain as a consequence, this would be not in a retirement account, in a brokerage account or an investment account. Those realized gains, whether they're short-term or long-term are ultimately what you're going to have to pay taxes on. If you also own securities, stocks, bonds, whatever it might be, that are down in value or they're below where you purchased them, it at least makes sense to consider if you were to realize some of those losses. So effectively selling a stock that you made money and also selling a stock where you lost money because those losses helped to offset the gains. Now, most importantly though, when you're evaluating the strategy and thinking about it, we generally aren't investing money because we want to lose it, right? right. We're investing money because we want to make money. But if there's a position that you are you know, for our portfolio management, for our clients, for example, if there's a position that we are contemplating exiting in short order, anyhow, if we realize that in a calendar year like 2021, for example, all of those losses can help to offset gains. But I really don't think it makes sense to utilize a strategy unless there are specific securities that you are 
ready to move on from anyhow. In other words, not just selling something at a loss for the sake of saving money on taxes because you'd rather make money. Right, right. So it's a very tactical thing. The big takeaway here is I wouldn't do this on your own. Yes. Um, and there's a, did you, did you bring up the wash sell rule? No, I didn't. So if you, if you no, realize- No, go ahead. So, so go the ahead. wash yeah. sell rule, you've got to sit out for 30 days. So that's what Corey was getting yeah. at is that if you like XYZ stock, and but you have a loss in it and you still want to own it, if you sell it, you've got to wait 30 days before you buy it back. So you could miss out on a recovery. So you've got to be very careful. And again, this is not for people with IRAs or Roth IRAs. This is a taxable brokerage account, like a trust account or, or something. So that's where you can potentially, and we've done this with some really good success for some clients, where you can realize some losses, sit out for 30 days and get back in. Uh, but you have to be careful. And then that's again, why you hire a group like us at Falcon Wealth Advisors to do this for you. So we're actually in the process of doing this for our clients. Uh, there's probably a handful that it makes sense out of all, at a little, we literally have hundreds of clients. So again, not for everybody, um, but we're looking through that for our clients to see if there's some opportunity to tax loss harvest. That's a good one, yep. Corey. Um, and so we got the mortgage, we got the HSA, we got the donor advised fund. I think another one is uh, that everyone can do that I've already kind of alluded to as a Roth conversion. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you were in a high tax bracket and you have a lot of this money in an IRA that you put in pre-tax, but now you're in a very low tax bracket. Well, you can actually look at converting some of that money, 10, 20, 50,000, whatever it is, into a Roth now that you're in a low tax bracket. And maybe even more importantly, before tax brackets go up, right? So if you're afraid that your tax bracket's gonna go up because of Washington, maybe uh, changing the, the brackets or the rules, this would be a good year to convert some money from an IRA into Roth. Now, the kicker is when you do this, it is a taxable event. So if you convert $50,000, you're gonna owe Uncle Sam a check on taxes as ordinary income on $50,000. And the best way to do that is to pay it out of pocket, not with a conversion dollar. So again, not for everybody, but it is an opportunity. And that's something we've actually been talking with a lot of our clients, particularly yeah. if you're in this retirement sweet spot zone, meaning you're retired, um, but you're not 72 yet. So your income's lower. You're not forced to take money out of an IRA. That's a good opportunity to do that. But you made a good point, I think, on one of our earlier episodes, Corey, that this could be for someone even while they're working, they can do it. So anybody can do it at any time, which is, which is good in there. Yep. All right, good. So let's go into our third phase, Corey, because um, I know this is important also because we have some clients that are deep into retirement. So they already are in their 70s. What's something that they can do to lower their taxes? One thing they can do is take advantage of the 0% long-term capital gains rate. This is relevant in very specific situations. So if someone is in the 10% or the 12% tax bracket, depending upon whether you know, they're individual or married, it's going to be, the numbers are different and we can help you know, figure out if this is the case for you. But if somebody is in one of those two low tax brackets, any realized gains, like we just talked about earlier, when we explained the tax loss harvesting, if you have capital gains, you realize those long-term capital gains. If you were in a low enough of a tax bracket, the percentage that you pay in taxes on those gains is 0%. Right. So this is called tax gain harvesting, right? Effectively, yeah. It, so it's let's, this, let's take exactly a time out here. And why don't you go over, because I know you've done this with success with a, with a client. Um, talk about loosely a real client story. So that's a new segment on my show. So you have a real client where they've done this, right? So they had company stock, right, in a taxable account. And this client, you know, had millions of dollars and made good income while they were working. What did they do? Were they, weren't they able to sell some stock and not pay any taxes on the gains? Exactly. Yes, because back to the, the ideal situation that you described earlier, Jake, if somebody has pre-tax dollars and Roth dollars and after-tax dollars, working with a client that, ha that was living off of their after-tax dollars, so they were already retired, but not yet collecting Social Security, no pension income, virtually no taxable income. Right. They're not taking any IRA distributions. They're just living off of the money in a trust account. And it's just like moving money from your savings account to your checking account. There's no taxes for that. So on paper, this person has virtually zero taxable income. And as a result, they also had company stock that was appreciated so we were tactical about how much stock we sold each year. And this particular client had multiple years where their tax liability was zero, despite the fact that we had realized capital gains because they had no other income that gets reported that would result in them having to pay those capital gains or paying tax on those capital gains, I should say. 
Right. That's awesome. Right. So they yep. say you, I mean, you, with that, with that strategy alone, you saved this client, this client, literally thousands of dollars in taxes just yes. by being tactical and smart and working with his accountant. Right. Yep. Exactly. So and we didn't understand. take the place as a tax advisor. We worked very closely with his accountant to make sure we were doing everything correctly. And then just, we executed the strategy. Yeah. The worst part about that is that we can't do it every year. Right. right, that, right. That, that, that's the worst part. But yes, it is. Uh, it, it's, it's something that's very important to at least consider if your taxable income is fairly controllable and you are retired, you don't have a salary, it can absolutely make good sense. And why can't you do it every year? Is it because some years you might be above that limit? Yeah, exactly. Or on the flip side, if somebody just continues to live off of those after-tax dollars and their pre-tax money just keeps growing and compounding, they end up in the dilemma in their 70s and 80s where they're having to take huge required distributions then because they just let that money continue to grow. So it, while it would be more tax efficient today, it could end up being more less tax efficient on the back end if we don't start taking distributions from an IRA, for example. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Good. And then, and then another um, one I had for somebody deep in retirement is something called a qualified charitable distribution. And what that is, is, is what happens is when you have an IRA or 401k and you're 72 years old, you have to take a required minimum distribution from the IRS. And it's typically around, right around 4%. So if you have a million dollars in an IRA and you're 72, you've got to pull out 40 grand, whether you want to spend it or not. Now, for many people, they're already pulling from their IRA, so it doesn't really impact them. But for some people, they don't need that money. And so what they can do is actually give all or a portion of that required minimum distribution directly to a charity. And that's what a qualified charitable distribution is. And so, and, and you know, it could do all or some. So let's say you need to take out 40,000 and you want to give 10,000 to your church. Well, you can give this 10,000 out. It satisfies that required minimum distribution, but that $10,000 donation to your church is not taxed. So that's a really neat opportunity for somebody in their seventies to help satisfy an IRS requirement while keeping your taxable income low. And while we're on the topic of taxes, just adding on to what you just said, Jake, because I love this strategy is that it doesn't matter if you take the standard deduction or if you mm. itemize, right? You can take advantage of this either way. Yeah. So really if once someone reaches that age where they can take these qualified charitable donations or distributions from their accounts, the idea is really any charitable giving that you are doing period should be coming directly from your IRA because that immediately reduces the dollar amount that you're going to have to take out and pay taxes on. Because if, right. Jake, if you were retired and I was your advisor and we were sending you distributions every month and some of those distributions were used to you know, give money monthly to your church or whatever other organization it might be, you would have to have enough deductions to be able to itemize on your taxes right. if the money passes through you which most people don't. I think it's close to 90% of taxpayers now take the standard deduction because right. it's so high. So the, the, the whole idea here is that this the money goes directly from your IRA to the charity, never passes through Jake's hands in that example. You never have to pay income tax on it and it reduces the amount that you ultimately do have to pull out and pay tax on. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. And I've got a, 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 something really exciting to announce here at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. But before that, Corey, I wanna give a quick plug and commercial to your show called In The Money Insight. It kicks out every week on this same YouTube channel or on its own podcast platform. Yes. You also have a weekly email that you're distributing it out uh, to as well. And so if you're not subscribed to that content, I highly encourage you to go ahead and check out Corey's show um, in there. And then thank you so much for everyone that has already subscribed. I'm very humbled, Corey. It seems like every week our subscriber count on YouTube continues to grow and our podcast listens, I mean, are in the thousands. So it's really, really awesome. It's been a lot of fun to do this and we're getting some really good feedback. Also, you and I are out there on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Did you shut down Instagram? I or did. It's not on there. No, I shut it down. You shut it down. So you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, right? You got it. Good for you, Corey, consolidating your life a little bit. That's right. Our company is on the, on the four platforms that I'm on. So on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So if you're not following or, or friends, uh, please feel free to send a request on that. Um, okay, good. So now on my quick announcement here, it's very exciting. Mm. I, I literally... Just had a conversation with the rep on this uh, yesterday, and we've been waiting forever for our compliance and legal department to vet this. It took far too long, in my opinion, but hey, that's what they get paid to do, which is to protect us and our clients uh, from any unnecessary exposure. But what we're going to be doing at Falcon Wealth Advisors is we're going to be investing heavily in tax planning software. And what this new software does, Corey, is we're going to be able to take our clients' tax returns, 
So that huge long document that most everyone doesn't really understand how to read, but the accountant that filed it, we're going to scan that into this software program that again, uh, Hightower has vetted out to make sure it's secure. And it's going to spit out tax planning projections and what if scenarios that we can run to influence our clients' taxes, hopefully in a positive manner. So I'm very excited about this. Uh, we're going to be doing it. It's literally going to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You and I aren't going to have too much involvement. We've got three financial planners currently on our team that are going to be heading up this project, um, but be on the lookout. So if you're a client of Falcon Wealth Advisors uh, and you want to start sharing your tax returns with us, we have a secure vault that, again, the financial planners can walk you through on that. So if you, if you are interested, all you have to do is email service at falconwealthadvisors.com. Let them know that you're interested in us looking at their tax planning projections and the financial planners will know what that means and, and get you set up for that. So I'm really excited about that. We're going to be rolling it out now in this year, literally this year, we're going to start doing it now and then obviously into 2022. So I'm very excited about it. It's going to be really cool. It is exciting because I think people, you know, year end, well, right now we're talking about year end tax planning. We're hosting a webinar on year end tax planning. People re read and hear stories all the time of, you know, how, this person or that person doesn't pay any taxes or whatever it might be. And people always have the questions, what can I do to help my tax situation? This particular software is going to be all encompassing, right? It, it will evaluate your specific situation, allow us to run what ifs, understand what the options are for you. So we're, we are very excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe we're, maybe I'm a dorky finance guy and you are too, Jake, but uh, we, 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 uh, we wear that with pride. Right, right. And it's not even about that, Corey. It's about adding value to our clients' lives. And that, that's sure. really what you and I are, are in business to do. And so right now we're doing it, right? We're doing tax planning, but we only know what the clients are telling us in many circumstances. Yep. We don't have the actual tax return in hand. And so once we get that official tax return, and once we're using some official tax planning software, it's just going to elevate our tax planning to the next level. And that's what we're trying to do at Falcon Wealth Advisors. We do that in all of our financial planning and we do that in our investments. And those are the two things that in my opinion, we do very well for our clients and what we focus on. So we're always trying to up our game and add more value to our clients' lives because ultimately, as I always like to say, clients choose to work with us to enhance their financial literacy and explain exactly what their financial plan means to them. So again, it's about you, our clients um, out there and that's what we're looking to do. now. If you're watching this or listening to this or reading this and you're not a client of Falcon Wealth Advisors and you want some tax planning, um, feel free, let us know. We're happy to take you through our process. We're gonna show you everything though. We're not just gonna run the tax planning projection because we need a financial plan. We need to look at your investments. All of that stuff plays together. And so we wanna make sure we look at your whole picture before we do just one piece of this. All right, good. So Corey, we are running out of time. Uh, is anything fun going on with you and Cassie? I know you guys just bought a Peloton, even though you we were resisting. You were resisted I resisted for a long time. Yes, resisted well, for a long time. But uh, yes, we just bought one. In fact, it's going to be delivered this weekend. Awesome. So we need to share usernames. And I think it'll be good because I, I'm looking for an accountability partner with it. Because I have one and I love it, by the way. Um, but my wife is freaking blown past me. She's like on a 13-week streak. She uses it all the time. So we're not even in the same ballpark, right? So I think you and I, though... You and I might be a little bit more fun to hold each other accountable. Uh, maybe not, though. I don't know. Are you suggesting know. that I won't blow past you the same way Rachel did? I, don't think, I hope not. I don't know. But uh, Time will tell, I guess, right? Well, you know, she's got a, you know, to, my, to make me make excuses, she's got a different work schedule than me. So she can, she, well, maybe it's not that. She has time blocked. You and I just talked about this last night. She has time blocked specific times in her day where she's going to do it and use it. And she has changed her schedule so that she can be healthier, which props to her. She's the one that wanted it, granted, but uh, so she's using sure. it, but um, it's really, I think you're gonna like it. I, I know it gets some bad flack and the stock hasn't done so well and, you know, but um, they've got it really figured out. I mean, the instructors are great. It can do a ton. Um, it's actually pretty fun to ride. It, it's a solid piece of machinery. It's not cheap at all. Um, so we like it. One, one tip for you. Uh, the people that installed it, they didn't really tighten everything. Okay. So when I was riding it, some things were kind of loose. So you got the Allen wrenches. Just make sure you tighten stuff up because it doesn't need to be as loose. Uh, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like the handlebars were a little loose. And I thought that... Yeah, I don't want that thing falling apart on me when I get on it. No, you don't. No, you don't. And, and like a cartoon sure you, where it smashes out from under me. Yeah, make sure you got the shoes. You have to have the shoes. We got the shoes. You have to clip in. 
which is yep. weird, but, and it's kind of hard to do to clip in, believe it or not, but yeah, we did that. On there. Once you're on there, it's easy. You, Jake, when, while we're just real quick on that subject, so Cassie and I put our, um, we put our Christmas tree up last weekend. Is that too early? Yes. Uh, I disagree. <laughs> I think it's way too early, uh, but that's just me. I mean, I'm not a, I love the holidays, but I don't need a tree. Even now that what's really messed up with us is we, during COVID, we redid our whole great room. Uh, and now we don't have a place to put the tree. So I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. Like it's a big first world problem, but. Decorate the Peloton. <laughs> but it's upstairs. I don't, cause the issue is we have a big great room with high ceilings and we bought the tree to fit in the great room. Right. Cause we just assumed that's where it would always go. But now, literally, with the furniture and the custom bookshelves, um, by the way, Troy, great job on that, and Brent, great job painting them. Um, we don't have room for it in our great room. So you I, guys will I, figure it out. Yeah, again, again, it's a it's a huge first world problem. I think Thanksgiving is the appropriate time to put that right after, in my opinion. But hey, if you like Christmas trees, put it up. Why not? Right. I think leaving, I think, I think too early isn't the issue. I think really anywhere after Halloween is fine. I think leaving it up past New Year's is wrong, in my opinion. I don't like that. That's just, again, my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I hear you. I'm, I'm the same way. Once Christmas comes and goes, usually as New Year's approaches and the holiday season's wrapping up, and we're moving into a new year. Time to, time to take it down. Yeah, and my dad's hilarious on that. I remember, I could be wrong, but I swear, I remember as a kid, like we would open gifts on christmas day and then three hours later we're taking all that stuff down it's over <laughs> christmas maybe that is explains over. why you don't care that much about the tree trees down lights down decorations down it's over party's over son back to work <laughs> i like it i like it and it wasn't like anyone was i wasn't sad about i bet my mom i bet my mom wanted to keep it yeah. up a little longer maybe but i i don't know i i remember it was like christmas is over you know, and decorations were great. We, my dad, my dad just decorated his house, which I'm him and my mom, and that's awesome. And so they, they're into it. But when is that over? It's over. Yep, coming down. <laughs> so I can't disagree with that. I don't know about I don't know about on Christmas Day, but I don't disagree <laughs> with you. Or, or I swear father. I could be wrong. Now I could be wrong. He, I, I don't know. I have to ask him. But I swear, literally. Three hours after opening up the gifts, that tree was down and it was over. <laughs> it was over. That's put funny. your toys away. Put your toys away. Throw the wrapping paper away. Christmas decorations are coming down. Our tree might look a little bare this year because Cassie and I, our, our Christmas gift to ourselves and each other was the Peloton we agreed. So, hey, and I don't think it'll fit under the tree, but that's all right. Hey, you can't, um, you can't deny giving each other the opportunity to be healthy. So exactly. I think, I, think that is a, I think that is a wonderful gift. And they're not cheap. So. right all right so good so i know we got to wrap up we got to we got to meet with our team here but thank you all for tuning in as always um if you have any questions on tax planning for me or Corey or our team uh you can simply email me at jake at falconwealthadvisors.com Corey is Corey at falconwealthadvisors.com and again we've got three financial planners so we've got matthew joe and jake who are extensions of Corey and i and they're helping crunch the numbers and getting into the weeds with our clients. So Corey and I are big picture, helping with overall strategy and advice. Uh, and then our planners are really getting into the weeds and crunching the numbers. It's been awesome having them aboard. Our clients are loving it. They're loving having us partnering up in meetings and having multiple people that they can rely on for their financial plan. Uh, so it's, I'm excited about that as well. And it's working, working very well for our clients. So yep. thank you again for tuning in. Thank you, Corey, for being on the show. And we hope all of you have a great week. Yeah.